This week in the restroom, we get our shiny red leather on to flush a Marvel superhero turd from 2003. We've got wirework fight scenes, BDSM costumes, goofy villains, radio playlist soundtrack, and Ben Affleck in a superhero performance so bad, he makes George Clooney's Batman look like Michael Keaton's Batman. It's Daredevil. No, not that Daredevil. And before we flush it, we're going to take it out and play with it a little. We're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. I am Honor Knight, your head cinematic flusher right here in the restroom. As always, I'm joined by my lovely co-cinematic flusher, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin. Hey, hey, hey. Our special guest this time out has just signed with the Corvisiero Literary Agency for his novel, The Last Outpost, a superhero historical fantasy, and we are super proud of that here in the restroom. He's also the host of a podcast called Hashtag Who Would Win, a weekly entertaining debate over who would come out on top when various heroes and villains are pitted against each other. Please welcome back author, historian, and podcaster, Jay Sandlin. Oh, that was such a mouthful, but thank you. <laughs> well, you got too many credits, man. Every time you uh, come on the show, let's... God damn it. Let's kick off this flush with a round of Thunder Dump. Blow some ass. I'll put 60 seconds on the restroom clock, and we're going to go around the cinematic bowl to see who has the worst alternate title for this week's cinematic turd. The loser will then get to read the RSS, that's Restroom Stall Stats, in a funny voice of my choosing. Here we go. Griff! The JV League. <laughs> Jay! Batman Begins. <laughs> I had Blind Justice League. Damn, crickets tonight. Griff! Uh, this is Colin Farrell's Brain on Drugs. Any questions? <laughs> Jay! Irish sniper. <laughs> ah, a little, little, yeah, a little weak on that one. I had Dumb Devil, which arguably was not much better. Griffin! Worst Evanescence visual album ever. <laughs> Jay! Electra, not so much. Oh, but I'm bump, and I had Marvel Goth Night. <laughs> Griffin! <laughs> Nacho Best Attempt at Marvel. <laughs> and that is time, that is time. Holy cow. We gotta end it there. Very good. Uh, pretty good round of thunder dump. Pretty good round of thunder. But we gotta have a loser this time, and the loser, of course, uh, not of course this time. You gotta be Jay. Jay, you kind of blew it on that one. So, all right. So Jay's a big loser this time out, and he's gonna read the RSS stats in the voice of a Greek accent in honor of Electra. I'll make it real easy for you. Oh no. Have at it. Daredevil is a 2003 American superhero <laughs> film. <laughs> Written and directed by Mark Steven Johnson, like my cousin Milos. It's based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name. The film stars Ben Affleck as Daredevil, Jennifer Garner as Elektra, Colin Farrell as Bullseye, and Michael Clark Duncan as the crime lord Kingpin. The film was released on February 14th, 2003. It generally received mixed reviews from critics, holding a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, based on 221 reviews, with the critical consensus reading, while Ben Affleck fits the role and the story is sporadically interesting, Del Devil is ultimately dull, brooding origin story that fails to bring anything new to the genre. Jay, how many accents did you go through in that? I, I, I have I at least I just, four. I loved it, I loved it. It felt, it felt like a trip to Epcot. So. <laughs> After all, that was that was wow. Awesome. All right, that was actually pretty spectacular. No, uh, Mr. I, yeah, I loved it. I love yeah, it. We I love was, it. I think I, I think I drifted from Greece to Transylvania. Yeah, <laughs> and back again. I, no, I heard a bit of Scotland. Yeah, there yeah. Scott. Oh, he covered it all. He covered all of Europe. Was basically covered. Europe, it. Europe. You know, you know what? Yes. It was like the whole Roman Empire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's your worldwide stats. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, boy, if you like your superhero films more gimped out than BDSM night at Comic-Con, have we got the cinematic turd for you? Uh, yeah, you know what? I thought Fifty Shades of Grey was boring, <laughs> but I was like, well, you know, like, Ben Affleck's, like, hold my beer because I'm not supposed to be drinking. <laughs> Uh, oh. Hey, uh, Charlie Cox called. He'd like to thank you for making a crappy Daredevil adaption so he could star in the good Daredevil adaption. Well, yeah, well, you know, you know what? I just kept scrolling through the recently released Black Panther posters just to keep me awake. <laughs> Even blind people thought this film sucked. When Daredevil was first written by Stan Lee back in the 60s, he was worried it would offend blind people, but he got letters from 
like Holmes from the Blind saying that the blind patients loved hearing the comics. Really? Not, they wouldn't like hearing this movie. What? With the superhero that's walking around in Eddie Murphy's like lawsuit? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. Marvel, back when they were known as the pre Iron Man We Suck Years. That's first, first, first crap. Yeah, but you know what? I th- you know what? They should call this. This is uh, John Favreau's origin story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah oh. he's in this. We'll talk about John as he's coming up. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Gardner. Uh, there's no way these two would ever get together, get married, have kid. Affleck cheats on her, big scandal, break up, and divorce. Oh wait, uh, my bad. Well, yeah, Never mind. who have, who have, who would have thought a masturbating <laughs> color contacts wouldn't last? I guess Affleck uh, hangs around in superhero films about as long as he hangs around in relationships. Hey oh. Come on! I hope, I hope a, not. Oh, he's he oh he's gone! Oh, he's gone! The Batmobile's left the cave, Jay. He's, he's there has to be yeah. a Batman. No, he, well, it's not going to be him anymore. Now he's. Well, he's it, they would have to reboot all the DC movies. And that's I the think. plan. No, that's what they're going to do with Flashpoint with the, the when they do the Flash uh, film. That's what they're going to. Yeah, yeah he's my, gone. That's my fear. Yeah. Um, that, no, that's but, a that's a that's a valid fear right there. Uh, so basically, uh, guys, if you're following with the he is Batman for now, and Justice League comes out. That's your tie-in for tomorrow. Is if you haven't fucking figured that out. Uh, since well, and uh, the embargo was just uh, lifted on. Yeah, and review. reviews are mixed. They're not horrible, so we'll find out they're tomorrow. Not hor- well, but, they're that's, not... but that's where the bar is for the DC universe. Not it's horrible. like, it's not horrible. They say your whole life flashes before your eyes before you die, even for a blind man. What also flashes by in the last five minutes were some crappy opening credits that in a too early reveal of Affleck's red leather fetish outfit makes him look like he just got off work at a BDSM club. Man, I haven't seen a superhero costume this bad since. Green Lantern, Spawn, Catwoman, Batman and Robin, X-Men The Last Stand, Steel, My Super Ex-Girlfriend, The Punisher, Meteor Man, The Phantom, Fantastic Four, Black Scorpion, Judge Dredd, and Superman Returns. Woo! Whoa. Well, it's, a, it's almost like a... It, it's a it, no, it's almost like a promo video for, like, one of those clubs that Stefan... On go, go for it! Go for it! This movie has everything. <laughs> Colored contacts, bad highlights, off-screen extramarital affairs, Ooh. Kevin Smith with bubble gum. <laughs> there you go, folks. There's just a tough on moment for this time out. I grew up in Hell's Kitchen. Barely six minutes into this turd, and we're already getting a flashback to how Daredevil became Daredevil. Doesn't anyone read comics anymore? <laughs> this was a terrible way to go. So and if the film opens with him on top of this church... And he lowers himself into the church, a huge church, and that comes into the end of the film. And he's bleeding out, and this priest finds him, and then we got to go through this backstory where, you know, now we have to see how he got to this point. Again, folks, the whole film is told in flashback. There's narration. We've been through this again and again and again. If Sarah Poland was here, she'd be losing her hair over this shit because she hates it. Uh, do you think I'm pulling double overtime down at the docks if I was working for Fallon? Not Jimmy Fallon. Uh, why does actor David Keats sound like a construction worker that sexually objectifies women who pet walk by in the street? <laughs> not, not everybody in New York talks like that. Uh, you think I'd be pulling double overtime down the docks? That kind of acts. I like, first of all, David Keats is an acclaimed actor. Can he just use his regular voice? His regular voice isn't that far off. And folks, if you don't know who David Keith is, uh, well, you younger kids aren't, go watch uh, An Officer and a Gentleman. Brilliant performance in that. Well, Brilliant, that, brief, that, but... we have to talk about something. <laughs> There's David Keith and Keith David. Oh, yeah. No, both, no. Da- both phenomenal character right, actors. Right, but way different. One happens to be white. Right. <laughs> One was in Officer and a Gentleman. The other was in They Live. Uh, you don't hit nothing with books, got me? Uh, or on Gay Men and Bars. hey oh. Basically, the opening film is he, uh, he lives in a poor neighborhood. Uh, his father is a, is a fighter, an ex-fighter, a drunk, and the, the kid's pretty much, uh, you know, on his own. This is really hard to watch after you've seen the TV show Daredevil. Right. And it did not take that much time. No, and I'm not the biggest fan of that, the Netflix series, uh, the Marvel, I'm uh, of any of them uh, by any means. But if you have to watch one, I would definitely recommend the, Marvel, the Netflix version over this crap. Because it would be the last thing I would ever see. Young Daredevil gets sprayed in the eyes with a toxic waste around the 10-minute mark. Only wake up in a hospital with a maxi pad taped to his face. Uh, <laughs> terrible bandaging yeah. on that kid. It, it, and it totally wasn't the last thing he ever saw, as we learn in just a few more scenes. Uh, yeah, they... I, I, yeah, it's like, is he Jordy LaForge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, basically, before he gets in this accent, folks, he's, he's running through um, a lot. A lift almost hits him, and then it steers into some toxic waste, and the waste sprays in his face. It's a pretty simplistic version of that. Was it, I don't know. It was a little different in the actual comic, right, Jang? I think that's closer to the oh, comic book origin. Okay. I know that was the origin they used on the animated Spider-Man TV show. 
um, that it was these radioactive chemicals that sprayed right. him in the eye. I can't remember if it was the comics, but on the show, it was the Kingpin was responsible for making this harmful substance. Oh, it all ties back to the Kingpin. Okay. Or like uh, trafficking it. Uh, I was a boy without fear. And we were the audience without decent entertainment for having to watch a mini Affleck somersault around New York City while the adult Affleck spits out all of his god-awful narration with all the passion of reading stereo instructions. Um, we should mention that Ben Affleck's not really good at doing narration. And this kid, of course, is on wires for the entire time. Uh, so basically, he gets he's beat up by kids in an earlier scene when he has sight. And then he goes through this transformation. Apparently, just because he gets sprayed in the face, you can, you can somersault and do handstands. Is that accurate for the comic? It is accurate, but the okay. film really butchers this in the <laughs> in, in, in that they make it out to where, in the film at least, he's just able to do this because he's blind. And that's obviously not typical for blind people to be able to do things like right. that the first day. <laughs> um, so they, what, right. they, what they lose is that, and I don't think it's this way in the Netflix series. I, I really can't recall. Uh, but I know in the comics that the substance itself gave him a scientific boost. Almost okay. like Peter getting bitten by the radioactive spider. Okay. Oh, no. In the series, like, he had to learn. Yeah, but he, he still has to train, that. right? No, he still has to no, train. In, in the series, he got the shit kicked out of him okay. when he first tried it. So, yeah, he still Which, has to train. He still has to right, train martial so that was, arts. That was that, more right. realistic origin yeah. on the Netflix series. But the, this movie kind of keeps the original corny 60s idea uh, of the toxic substance giving him this enhancement. Which doesn't even work but, in but 2003. I, I you know? Wasn't part of the thing, like, he could tell when people are lying because of, like, the tone of their the heart voice. Rate. Or... Yeah. 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 Right, he, but for all intents and purposes, he's a normal guy, which bugs me because they show him doing these CGI super leaps in the beginning. Yeah, well, that's what I said. That's That was my issue with yeah. it. There's sort of wire works. If, nobody, first of all, the super leaps throughout the film, we'll talk about that, which is literally impossible for some of these characters who do not have superpowers. Cue obligatory Stan Lee cameo porn around the 13-minute mark. Why has anyone reported Marvel for cinematically abusing Stan Lee for all these years? What, like elder abuse? Yeah. <laughs> Can we can we stop? Like, can we can, on, let this guy on, die already? Dude, his Jesus. wife just died. Just give him his joy. Like, oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, I was man. gonna say it's kind of the other way around. I think he's beating down Marvel's doors in each scene, saying, "Put me on camera." Well, I don't know, like, but you gotta remember, Stanley wasn't the most honorable guy. Okay, you know, he took credit for a lot of stuff that and didn't even cite Jack Kirk for years and years and years. Okay, so he's not. Yeah, well, he's not the saint we remember. You know what? The bar for honorable. Guys <laughs> well, as, boy, lower that. <laughs> Lower. That's yeah, every yeah, and every day, folks, it gets even lower, which I didn't even think was possible. Uh, and if you're a Stan Lee fan, and I'm sure you guys are, 13 minute mark guys, you can check out his cameo there. So he's been doing this for many moons at this point. Go ahead, fight me. I dare you. I dare you. I dare devil you. Get it? Get it? Jesus Christ, crickets. I know. I'm just like, <laughs> I think, no, I'm trying not to remember seeing that. The payoff to this where the kids beat him up earlier when he has his vision he goes back as a blind dude and is able to kick these kids' ass. Again, a lot of wire work in that scene, guys. And those kids, like, waited six months to come back and beat his ass again? <laughs> yeah, wait! <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's like, round two, yeah, in the, in, the, in, the, in the same alley, Jay, in the same alley. You would think they would have, like, a Goonies-level plan. <laughs> ready to go. I would seek justice one way, dot, 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 or another. Q end of 13 minute flashback and crappy narration as Affleck emerges from a hyperbaric chamber that it looks like it was borrowed from Bruce Wayne himself. He didn't have a hyperbaric chamber, did he? No, no, come on, I, I, this is bullshit. Yeah, he didn't. But you know, Bruce Wayne didn't sleep upside down either, and that <laughs> well, really well, worked for Batman '89. I know. Well, you can pull it off with Tim Burton and, and Michael Keaton. You can't. Maybe stop. they were trying to copy Batman '89. You know. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's, it's a creepy thing and it's in a dank location uh, we're going to talk about his, his daredevil cave in a moment but uh right now we're just seeing a very small part of it my client is not on trial here but your hair certainly is aflac which looks like you walked past a jet engine just prior to shooting this courtroom scene at the 20 minute mark who was the hair person on this film he looks it was whoever it was doing in sync's hair at the time <laughs> It's terrible. It's a 2003 I, I, hair. I think it was kind of an early version of the Edward Cullen. The boy band hair. It was it, boy band hair. He didn't have the frosted tips, at least. <laughs> no, no, but remember how, okay, no, you probably don't, but remember, like, how even, like, to differentiate themselves, some of them had, like, red highlights. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, but this guy has no highlights. He just has real fucked up hair. Uh, no highlights really describes this film. 
Oh, man. We'll give a minor. Oh, I, I garners highlights. Oh, oh, we'll give two minor wins to both uh, Griffin and Sam. Nice going, guys. Uh, it's not right. Another rapist is back on the streets. Or still working in Hollywood. Hey, yeah. oh, not tonight. I got work to do. Cue superhero snap zoom suit up scene around the 21 minute mark. Uh, and so he hits the streets in his leather outfit. I haven't seen this much bad CGI leaping around a city since Catwoman. Guys, you have to put some weight on your CGI characters. You got Gravity has to come into play. You can't just have them no, floating again, around again, the frame. Just, like, they just oh. took Eddie Murphy's raw suit out. <laughs> Stretched it out a little bit to accommodate for height. And oh, put it on. There's a lot of backflips and, and leaping around. It's, I wish they had just done it like parkour, right? That's how they did in Daredevil to Netflix, right? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah it's more parkour. Yeah. yeah, and that makes more sense. That's that's more realistic and grounded. But he was like Spider-Man in this. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. He's yeah, not. Dare, Daredevil is not, not Spider -Man. on Spider-Man's weight <laughs> class. <laughs> so what do you want? Justice. Cue hyper-edited fight sequence in a bar, no less, around the 23-minute mark, where Affleck's uh, stunt double gets to earn a salary. So basically, uh, there's a guy in the court, the rapist we talked about just a moment, I didn't really talk about it, I said the line. There was a rapist who gets off scot-free, Affleck is not happy with that verdict. He puts on his, uh, his snappy uh, raw outfit, heads down to a local bar, which is a massive bar, uh, to go uh, take him out there. Uh, instead of waiting until he was alone and drunk, which would make more sense, he's going to go into a public place full of 50 fucking people and take this guy out. Um, okay. Uh, how is no one able to shoot him at point-blank range, folks? He's wearing a red leather outfit. He's dressed like Eddie Murphy. How can, how can you possibly <laughs> miss him? It's just a bad way to stage a fight scene with a superhero. If you want to see a great example of that, the Batman sequence in Batman vs. Superman. Horrible film, but that one fight sequence he has in that warehouse makes complete sense of how it's structured and set up choreography using a superhero character. Am I right, Jan, this one? This is how you properly do Oh, yeah, do it. I was thinking right. about that. Uh, yeah, they how got you that from, do the, it. Uh, from the Arkham games where okay. they tell you in the very first level, and I don't know if it was a reference to this scene, but Batman thinks to himself, if I just jump right in the middle of all those guys with guns, I'll be dead. Yeah, yeah. but this is what he does here. This is what, this is what Daredevil does. He literally exactly. jump right. Exactly. exactly. Hey, that light at the end of the tunnel, guess what? That's not heaven. That's the sea train. Uh, maybe if Affleck uh, had said this God. line in his Batman voice, it would have sounded cooler. As it stands, he sounds like he's trying to order a drink at a crowded nightclub. 27-minute mark. So he, he chases this idiot no, down into the subway. Like dad jokes. He dad <laughs> Yes, well, you know yes. what? That, but here's the funny. So anyway, the guy. Oh, let me. I'll circle back to the line in a second. So the guy he breaks his back kind of on the subway. He falls in the subway and he basically lets him die and gets him get run over by a train. And that's how he. That's how he serves justice. It's bloodless but brutal. Uh, slices them in half. Yes. Yeah, but, is it, I was about to say, is it just me or has the hero of the movie straight up murdered somebody? Oh no! Nope, oh, yep, yep. oh yeah, absolutely. it was cold murder. It was cold murder and, right there. No, and you know what? This movie would have been way more interesting if it was our. Well, here's the thing. I would have bought this murder and the way he handled murdering this guy if we had seen the guy's uh, violent act. Not in graphic detail, but if we had seen the guy, you know, rape the girl, we would have, then we understand what a piece of shit he was. We had no context with this guy. He's in the courtroom well, and he's out. There's no way to hook us, hook us emotionally into that scene. So when he got killed, you would have been like, fuck yeah, that's what he deserved. Also, I'm going to circle back to that line, folks. If he had just said, hey, the light at the end of the tunnel, guess what? That's not heaven. That should have been the end of the line. He had a tag yeah. on that C train thing, and it, and it diminished the impact of that line. But that's yeah. just a minor yeah. point. I don't know why they why they had. Yeah, him. you're surprised he yeah. didn't take off his like red shades and like, and then it goes. Wah! I wish he'd said that's the A train, <laughs> and they started playing the song. <laughs> there is no proof that your so-called daredevil even exists. Um, not only does he exist, but he apparently also carries lighter fluid around to make the double D's on the ground, where a someone's gonna light it up at the exact moment, and b no one's gonna step on it to mess it up. How the hell do you do like, Who do you think you are, Zoro? <laughs> so that's his calling card, which is only used once in the film. He does a lighter fluid double D on the subway platform, and there's 1,500 cops. Nobody stepped in that exact no, area. There were, uh, you know, there were double Ds in that scene, and I only wanted them from Jennifer Garner. But a bump. Um, Ew. She's not a and, and, and the reporter, if the reporter was the really the only one right. that smelled gas on the floor, are you really going to throw fire into <laughs> gasoline in a big area of cops? I, yeah, it's supposed to be a cool moment, guys, but when, you, when logic comes into play and you're questioning the logic, it, it's not really that cool. It's, it's really And funny. where does he keep the lighter fluid in his, <laughs> uh, you know, skin tight Is, leather is outfit? Eddie Murphy hey, off what, do you know what? Wherever Joe from Arrested Development keeps his lighter fluid. I thought we'd take our relationship to the next level, and then I realized this is the next level. Uh, that level includes a quick tour of Daredevil's Batcave. It looks more like a Russian prison than it does a cool superhero's home base. 29 minute marks. So we get to see where his outfit, where his lair is. It's terrible. 
It's just poorly, it's poorly designed. It's dark. It's gloomy. You can't see how he has anything set up. It's not, it's not Batcave cool, guys. Yes, was, was my fine. I didn't know well, Daredevil, I mean, this look, was his lair. I, this think about, think about their assets between <laughs> Bruce Wayne and Matt Murdock. I mean, we've already seen that he does well, not money. win his cases anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, he's poor. So where's he yeah, getting Isn't he pro bono anyway? He often works pro bono or as a public defender, yes. So like, yeah, I don't mind if it looks like shit. Just make it look like cool. Okay, that'd be, that'd be fine, but where's he getting the money for these for his outfit and his weapons? That's what I want to know. Like, Because that's a pretty expensive... He lives in a rent-controlled lair. <laughs> I don't know. In case he can afford that, uh, yeah, that fancy nunchuck. A man without fear is a man without hope. Uh, but not without a lazy eye, which makes Affleck look like his uh, lithium prescription just kicked in around the 30-minute mark. Uh, he goes to uh, a confessional, this priest we saw at the beginning of the film, to confess his sins. He just killed a guy. But the close-up shot, even with the, those stupid contacts in, it, do, it doesn't look right. That actually may be a result of the contacts. I've heard oh, people really? who don't know. Yeah, I've heard people who don't normally wear them. It can, like, really screw up their eyes. Oh, all right, all right, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt of that. But he, does, he doesn't look cool in that shot. He looks like a, yeah, does, he, looks, he looks a little spaced out. From what I know, Matt Murdock typically doesn't take off his glasses in public anyway. No, he doesn't. Uh, yeah, not in so, the... I mean, I don't right. know if this was supposed to be screen time for Affleck or FaceTime for Affleck, but it, it, it backfired to me. Uh, there are alligators in the sewers. A pre-Happy Hogan, John Favreau, sucks a early Marvel dick as uh, Matt's friend Foggy Nelson. Always on the wrong end of the cinematic blowjob, huh, kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Griffey, I got nothing else to say. This is it. I'm giving you the floor here to go on about how John Favreau has been... Sucking Marvel dick for a while, actually, right? Well, yeah. no. I mean, I think this was his first This taste. is it? This is the first taste? <laughs> yes. First taste of the Marvel dick, and he get, he's like, I'm in. I'm all in. Look, in bear, <laughs> in, he, instead of burying his trauma, oh. he said, fuck you. <laughs> I am going to show you how to do a Marvel movie. You're right, and he did. Uh, so we'll give him credit. You're right. I agree with that. He did uh, Iron Man, then he fucked up Iron Man 2 and got shit canned. And uh, he showed up in a bunch of other Marvel well, he's, films. He's still... And then Disney took him no, back and let him do the no. Jungle Book. I think his thing is launching a new kind of genre. Like, he did the Jungle Book, and now, oh, and if he fucks this up, <laughs> there will be hell to pay. He's going to be doing Lion King. Oh, oh yeah, wow. yeah, I don't fuck that up, dude. I still no, miss then... when he was uh, Monica's ultimate fighting boyfriend. <laughs> <on Friends. laughs> him in uh spider-man homecoming yes i liked him there i never really cared for him as a director i thought he did i thought he got lucky with iron man i think he really botched it with iron man too but I again that was lucky i think he found something that was he saw something and he felt confident enough to take it in the direction it needed right but then of course when the sequel came around he ended up listening to um I, marvel I, I, too much and they ended up blowing that um are happy hogan <laughs> and foggy nelson basically the same guy they are you're absolutely yes, right yes, yep. yes. Yep. Yeah, he basically plays the same character, in, but he plays it the same way, I should say. Not the same character, but he does play in the same... Uh, his hair has gotten a little better, not much. Even the, the character descriptions are the same. They're kind of the bumbly <laughs> sidekick to the main hero without yep. powers. Hey, there you go. All right, there you although, go. Although, you know, he's a little bit less bumbly in Spider-Man Homecoming. And also, uh, we'll cite the uh, Daredevil series. I forget the actor's name who plays it in Daredevil. I have not yeah. seen... He's uh, actually very good in that. That guy's He is aren't. excellent. What's yeah, his and name? I have not I don't know seen Jungle name. Book, but I've heard it's excellent. Yeah, I, I'm not seeing... Yeah, 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 guys, if you're... And, I heard it's a great film. And, but... I mean, it's impossible. Basically, you're going to be, like... He's going to work very hard to have to fuck up uh, the line. Yeah, I, yeah, I think... He's, so, yeah, guys, if you're John Favre fans, this is where, this is where he got it. This is where he starts his Marvel career. Well, it just Disney, shows Disney and Marvel. If you're trusting that much talent... Yeah, yeah, don't fuck Where, it up. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what are you, dot, 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 blind? Was anyone else blinded by Jennifer Gardner's goofy green contacts around the 34-minute mark? Oh, she's, my God. She steps into this coffee shop like she's appearing in a Lens Crafters commercial. Fucking terrible, guy. Like, they slowed it down, and I think they CGI enhanced her. I mean, but she's wearing these awful green contacts. It's she looks terrible. like, I thought she looked like she was going to have lasers were going to shoot out of, her, out of her face. Didn't even make any sense. Anyway, so this, they're in a coffee shop. That's why we're mentioning John Favreau. They're having a, just a morning meeting and going over shit. She busts in there. Again, it's a, it's a weird sequence. Uh, she wait. has the laser eyes. She also has some kind of super speed because by the time she walks in and by the time Affleck gets to her, which is immediately, she's already got her coffee. Right. Uh, I don't. So anyway, he is so enamored by this woman uh, who blows him off the first time inside the coffee shop. He decides to stalk her 
uh, outside, even though he's blind down the street. Uh, I, any corners are at a, a playground uh, in a schoolyard, which is basically a back lot set, folks. Don't get too crazy with that. Yeah, Location which is shooting. not creepy at all. No, not at all. I don't like being touched. Uh, cute, meet cute fight scene around the 35-minute mark where the choreography wants to be Jackie Chan amazing, but comes off more as West Side Story dinner theater adequate. God, this was a terrible sequence. But it's How all about guys... not wanting to be touched. <laughs> right, it's all going to be left alone. So these two start busting out in this uh, wire work fight scene. Um, then he says, stop hitting me at one point. Uh, what you should stop, Affleck, is having that shit-eating grin on your face throughout this whole sequence. He looks like he just let out a fart and is waiting for Gardner to catch wind of it. He's getting, you notice that? He, oh, look at, he, doesn't, he probably did. That's he did. <laughs> that was his big cute. That's his aphrodisiac. Yeah, that's how he ended up getting married to her. That's, he just farted in her general direction. Uh, with apologies to Monty Python. Jesus Christ. My name is Electra Nachios, and I'm going to do my best white girl accent, even though my character is supposed to be fucking Greek. Guys, how do you not give, at least give her an accent? At least the chicken, the. um. Elodie Young or whatever the hell her name is in a Daredevil well, yeah. series has an accent. Well, how do you? She's a Greek character. Well, I, I have is, to say that was really the least of my worries. Really? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. That, Come that on. Was it really was already. Bad. This that is a, was this was the point bad. when yeah. I was realizing how bad this movie really <laughs> was going to be. Oh, speaking like, of that, Jay. Wait, wait. So now before you say, now saying that, please circle back to the story you told me ahead of time about your magical date watching this film. Yes, I went to go see this film in theaters on a date <laughs> with my first girlfriend in high school. Oof. And I was such a, you know, there weren't many superhero films back then. So I was like yes, such a I huge fan. So I went to see it, and I think I was the only person in the, in the theater up to this point <laughs> that was just still really into the movie because the audience was fleeing. <laughs> uh, and I remember there was like a clique of kids that got up and left and they had like a really primitive cell phone, like a flip phone or maybe even before the flip phone. They go outside and they uh, one of them drops it and I hear someone shouting, my cell phone broke. <laughs> oh, yes. And I, I was just so furious that they were interrupting my Marvel movie that I was so excited for. I went and got the Usher and I was I was oh, complaining. Oh, Jesus. I was probably as red as Daredevil's suit. Um, <laughs> Oh this sounds very romantic, Jay. This sounds the super relationship right. continued though. The oh, relationship she survived. didn't. Wow, I, she didn't leave you right there at ah. the theater, huh? We survived Daredevil. We survived <laughs> the original Spider-Man, but we did not make it to Spider-Man Two. Wow, that's a, there you go, folks. Romance is still alive, and it, you can survive Daredevil, folks. In case you are wondering, your, your, your relationship is strong enough. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, this is the me, the, folks. If at least all these show clips of this movie, this this is the scene they show is these two idiots fighting on wires uh, on uh, teeter totters and this other dumb shit while uh, Affleck's just grinning. I guess this is where they hit it off, and obviously they ended up together. Uh, they might have fucked right after this scene or right before it. Get me bullseye. Uh, cute Colin Farrell on the 40 minute mark decked out uh, like a biker bar tattoo artist who just got released from prison. Uh, basically everyday Colin Farrell. Uh, Jesus Christ, did anyone else feel like they were contracting an STD every time he was on screen? (laughs) So I remember reading back, he was on a hell of a lot of drugs. Yeah. Oh my God! So basically, so Kingpin is the major crime lord. We haven't really talked about him. It's Michael Clark Duncan, uh, and I'm not gonna we're not gonna bag on him because he's Michael Clark Duncan. He's awesome, but we'll talk about him in, in a minute. Yeah, um, because this other guy got killed in the subway. Um, they're on. There's something. You know, something's amiss, and he needs a. Uh, and they have to deal with uh, Electra Nachos, whose father is uh, some shading dealings with um, Kingpin, and uh, Kingpin's not happy that the guy wants to leave the business. So as a result, uh, he's basically gonna kill him. But they have to get to her. So. As a result, he says, "Get me bullseye." Uh, Irish. So I bet he's, a, he's no, an assassin. No assassins in New York City. Uh, that's the other thing. He's in Ireland for this opening <laughs> sequence. Uh, Irish piece of trash. Uh, I had to let that racist comment slide only because I was laughing hysterically at bullseye's tattoo on his bald head while he was shooting paper clips across the bar. Uh, no, he actually trashed this movie <laughs> in he? the press for this. Oh my god! I, and he should have because he's a shaved head. He's got this awful prosthetic tattoo on his forehead and yeah, he's shooting he ba- paper clips he basically he uh, did shave his head but he said Jesus. i did this for the money but god it's shite like <laughs> yeah <laughs> death by paper clip is like straight well, out of a naked gun parody well, movie and, honestly, oh, absolutely. and jay that wouldn't have killed the guy uh if you just get like that's you'd have to it has to be well killed. to be fair um in the oh, comic boy. books bullseye is famous for killing with improvised weaponry he's killed people with pieces of glass 
just anything that's around him. So, okay. I mean, it's a good idea. He could have made it look cool if he broke a beer bottle and killed the guy, maybe. <laughs> that would have made more sense, right. Exactly. But here it looks really stupid. and he Really looks like, stupid. He looks like I a get what they were idiot. trying to oh, do. God. I get what they were trying to do, but it fell flat. And actually, in the in the comic, uh, Bullseye has a better costume. He has a costume. Here he's Well, just... okay, so in the, co- in the current run of comic books at this point, they replaced Bullseye's costume with, like, a black leather coat when the oh, movie Jesus. was coming out. Uh, oh, they did. Oh. Yes, mm-hmm. for the movie, but right. then he later got his costume back because oh, no one really cared about the movie. <laughs> and uh, Colin Farrell's bullseye mentions later, I want a costume, too. Uh, this looks like the set of goddamn Sanford and Son. Uh, even in 2003, that reference was dated. Not to me. I actually... Oh, uh, you like that one? Uh, yeah, we're going to uh, cite the uh, Foggy Nelson. So basically, yeah. uh, Affleck and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Affleck and uh, Foggy Nelson are having a meet, uh, not a meet cute. They're having a meeting, and uh, they talk about this a party that they're invited to, which is hosted by Kingpin. Uh, and Electra will be there, but um, I, what's his name? He's being he's having his period, um, Daredevil, and he's, he doesn't want. He's being pissy about. It. He doesn't want to go. Uh, he doesn't think oh, it's going to work awesome. out between them. That's cute. Um, That's cute. Y'all seem to be having your periods all the time, especially <laughs> the guy in the White House. Oh, but I'm bum. Well, I mean, he at least he wears a red costume, so it'll blend <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> I knew I'd find you, considering all of the street scenes were shot on a back lot. It shouldn't be too hard to find them. Uh, this is what Electra finds him on the street. They did shoot in New York briefly. Uh, there's only like maybe three scenes were actually shot on location. The rest of it's this horrible backlot set that you've seen in every other film that doesn't exist in New York City. Guys, if you've been in New York, all that shit does not happen in the background uh, as it does in this sequence. With it was gross. It's, it's, yeah, it just looks terrible. Uh, here, oh boy. Here, so basically, he meets her up again and they go to this roof. He takes her to a rooftop of the city, which is a really not a great view of the city. He keeps saying how amazing it is. I didn't think it was that amazing because the building wasn't that high, but all right. Uh, here it comes. Q rain machine around the 51 minute mark as Affleck uh, creeps on a rain soaked gardener. Uh, the two of them have about as much chemistry together as Affleck and JLo. Uh, <laughs> and then. Well, uh, I, guess, I, I guess, isn't, isn't that like the rule? If you have terrible <laughs> chemistry you end up on together? screen, like it's banging off. I guess, maybe that's it, because here I didn't believe them at all, but I guess, I guess it worked out. Uh, Gardner and, and, and Affleck, also, this is like their second time meeting. They've yes. maybe spent all of 15 minutes together. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a movie, but it was a little hard to swallow that kiss. It felt shoehorned in. Like, the yeah. test audiences were like, what? You're going to have them interacting and not kiss? Uh, yeah, it's a really four sequence. And then the following sequence, Gardner and Affleck make love in the following scene. Like, they're both recovering from hernia operations. Uh, <laughs> they're just barely moving and trying to... Ow, it's, ow. It's, it's pre- <laughs> That's like Fred Garvin, male prostitute. Uh, deep SNL oh, cut. Boy. Real deep yeah, SNL like... cut there. I know. I'm going. Guys, you got to Google that one. I can't. We can't even explain yeah. that. Uh, I know. It's super deep. So anyway, a terrible. It's not even really a lovemaking scene, guys. They're just really holding each other for one second and they're kissing. It's really. It's actually kind of gross and uncomfortable. It's not really. It's some bathing suit area contact. Where are they having that scene? Because there's a fireplace in the background. Did they rent a hotel room? I don't even know where that I don't, is. It's not his place. That's where your concentration is. They <laughs> failed. I'm not a biggest fan of Jennifer Garner. I don't think she, I think she's attractive, but I, I don't think, I never thought she was sexy. She never came up as sexy to me. There's a new role she's training for, and it's supposed to be basically kind of like uh, Liam Neeson version. She's going to be like the female Liam Neeson where like her. Oh, that's fine. Maybe if I. No, I love that. Does, does someone abduct like... her son or something? No, no, they're oh. killed. They're straight up murdered. Oh, okay. Wilson Fisk is in a hizzy. Uh, Fabulous shit. <laughs> well, hey, I. <laughs> Uh, we, no, I said Wilson Fisk, but it could, it could come out that way. But then again, uh, Favre should have been immediately slapped for saying hizzy. I guess that was my point in my, that line. Oh, God, I hate that. So anyway, they end up going to the party because he got laid, and now he has impetus to go to this. Uh, this but It's just in a hotel. It's not this big a deal, guys. Matt, I wish I could give you my eyes for one night, uh, but not his dick because uh, that would be gross. <laughs> on, now. Yeah, you don't want, yeah, we don't want, yeah, that would be super gross. Okay, enough said. And that was uh, John Fabio saying that line. I should, I guess I should give context to who said that. Uh, the only, so basically because Electra shows up at this party and she's really, she is, now she does look good in this scene. That dress looks banging on her. She looks, she's in really good, really good shape. She got in really good shape for this film. And unfortunately she had to stay in good shape for that awful sequel. We're going to mention that in a little bit. I, I gotta um, say, like, I think she's gorgeous. I mean, oh, she, so you yeah. think she really yeah, does? Yeah, she turns me on. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, the only reason I got dressed up for this thing is that I wanted to look beautiful for you. Um, in case you missed it, Electra, he's blind. You could have wore a burlap sack and he wouldn't know the difference. Oh, God. Uh, New York is not a safe place tonight, especially when killers can toss throwing stars through windshields. It isn't. Yeah, or one minute, Mark. All right, let's recap, folks. Mr. Um, Kingpin, 
It's gonna it basically says he's gonna kill Jennifer Gardner's father's uh, the character's I, father, Alexa's father. R.I.P. Michael Clark Duncan, but yeah. God, Vincent D'Onofrio was so much better. At uh, that. I, I'm gonna cite. Yeah, I guess we should he mention was. that now. Clark Duncan is is a is a presence in this film, and uh, I can't say anything bad about. It. He did what he had to do with the material, and I thought he was fine in in the role. Uh, but yes, it, after seeing Vincent D'Onofrio just really blow it out of the water. Uh, it's yeah. really it's really hard to yeah get around another kingpin. I, I love Michael Clark Duncan. I do, but even before Vincent's great performance, he was still my number two kingpin. And right. number one was the kingpin that they had in Spider Man: The Animated Series. Oh it, yes, oh, okay. you're right, and you're absolutely right. That well, was a great I, I, kingpin. I too. feel like they didn't give him enough to do in this movie. In the comic books, the kingpin is like ninety nine percent muscle yeah. and four hundred pounds. Yeah, he's so big he's, He's able to even crush Spider-Man through his spider strength. He's yeah. one of the strongest humans on the planet. Wow. See, yeah, and, and Clark does have the presence. D'Onofrio a little less so, but he, he still did. They're, they're both he big. did. He yes. did. Yeah, he's a big dude. He's a big fucking guy. Uh, New York. So basically, Kingpin says he's going to kill the father. The father leaves the party early. Elector decides to go with the father. They jump in a limo and zip it on the street. Just as Mr. Uh, Bullseye steals a motorcycle and, and uh, attacks the... Uh, I don't know how he found the limo. I don't know where he knew this limo was going to be. I didn't know that he knew they, they were going to be leaving the party. A lot of logical questions, folks. But he starts throwing throwing stars through a window. Guys, in case you're wondering, you can't do that. I, you know, you, throwing stars will not penetrate a windshield, no matter how hard you throw them. Uh, Bullseye is very good at aim, but he doesn't have superpowers enough to throw a... Uh, am I right on this, Jay? I don't think he has the power to do that, right? I rule that Bullseye can do that. <laughs> I, yeah, that's what that's, I thought, too. I thought right. he had some sort of, oh, like, God. super strong penetration. All right, there you go. But, but, um, bump. There's your uh, hashtag uh, who would win episode for this week on uh, Soil Restroom Cinema. Uh, Bullseye. Why doesn't Daredevil stick around to tell Elektra that it was Bullseye that just killed her father and not him? This is the biggest problem I have with the scene. Uh, so, basically, this, in the sequence as it, as it plays out, he fucks up uh, Daredevil as a result. And Bullseye uses Daredevil's weapon to kill uh, her father, Electra's father. And then uh, Bullseye just disappears. For some reason, Electra never sees any of that. And then she stands up and starts shooting at Daredevil because she pulls this Daredevil's, uh, you know, stick or nunchuck stick out of his fucking chest. And uh, he just had to stay there and just explain it to her. He didn't fit me. takes off like a pussy. He just uh, CGI takes off, I should say. He just leaps up a building and he's gone. But anybody uh, that we could have literally cleared up the rest of the movie. Yeah, now, yeah. That's the, what I'm the leaping was getting to me the whole. Oh, movie. you're having a problem. Well, yeah. There's no weight to it, Jay. You gotta put you gotta put weight on these characters. Well, not having... only that, but Jesus. his his accident made him blind, and that enhanced his hearing. Why can he suddenly leap like no, he's Rabbit can't. Man? <laughs> exactly. But Electra yeah, it, Electra it, pulls it, that shit too. So there's other there's other people leaping around, and Dar and Bullseye does it the same thing. Everybody can leap twenty feet in the air. The bad leaping CGI was indicative of the early two thousands. I would say okay. um, the Blade trilogy was also uh, guilty. Oh of yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. One of, which was that which were some very very strong films compared yes. to this one, especially Marvel yeah, because, was doing good things. I agree. Well, uh, first yeah, Blade because they had plot and characters you actually were invested in. Yeah. Like, I was bored. I was like, I don't care about any of you. <laughs> you were right, Father. You were right. Uh, right about not one, but two Evanescence songs showing up on this god awful oh. soundtrack. Yeah, you're going to be right, folks. Out in five minute mark. Uh, don't worry, folks. If you don't recall this first crappy Evanescence tune, which is called My Immortal, you're definitely going to remember the second one when it shows up later. We're not going to spoil that. Yeah, it, it's, so it's, it's a, this is a funeral fun, scene. Super fun when you rec uh, remember your ex like in a car <laughs> crying and saying, <laughs> Will you take me back? I was so stupid. Oh, my. Boy, this song's playing. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right, so, uh, Griffin had uh, PTSD flashbacks about uh, past relations. All right. Well, all right. So, folks, uh, yeah, it's Ev for anybody who remembers Evanescence, for the 10 seconds they were popular in the early 2000s, uh, this is the first of two songs. It's off, off the same album. They were popular for about three years. There you go. Off the same album, by the way. Uh, so, anyway, it's a funeral scene. They're burying her father, and uh, they have an Affleck and Elector have a little talk there. And she says, there's no place for me now. He says, yes, there is. And then I wrote, in my pants, uh, which sounds kind of cheap now, just reading it that way. But I'll throw a hail on the end of that. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> there you go. Hey, so, hey, but, uh, no, she meant it that but way. She, but she still thinks that he killed her father. And I don't know why didn't, she didn't try to kill him right there at the funeral. That doesn't make any sense. She just gets in a limo and takes off. And Kingpin's there. So everybody's, everybody, all the principal actors are at this, this rain-soaked uh, because you know when funerals happen, they don't happen. In, uh, they're like, always wait, raining, right? He, he was like, "Wait, uh, I need to talk to you." No. Uh, this better be good, Kirby. 
I'm not sure what kicked off my bout of dysentery first. Kevin Smith showing up in this chart around the hour and seven minute mark, or the fact they named his character after the legendary Jack Kirby. I'm getting yeah, real fucking tired of that. You know what? Like, Ugh. his heart was breaking as he was filming that cameo. He is the he, one who recommended Affleck like, for this role. He knew exactly what was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew it was a train wreck, but he's also the one responsible for recommending Affleck to get this role. That's why Affleck played this well, part. So you know why? Ugh. Because, he, like, Affleck was obsessed with superheroes and he was like, Listen, dude, you'll never play Batman, so you might as well take this. Yeah, and look what happened. I'm not kidding. I'm not oh kidding. My God. Like, we hear they got their eyes on this Christian Bale guy, <laughs> and we know he's not going anywhere. Right, exactly, yeah. And, uh, yeah, boy, we were, oof, jeez. Not only we get Daredevil and we have Miss Batman. Holy shit. So, yes, yeah, Kevin Smith, if you Kevin Smith fans, hour and seven minute mark, he has one scene. I guess he's a coroner. I don't know what the hell character. But anyway, there's a Joe Pantoliano we haven't mentioned, and he plays a reporter that's investigating the the. Uh, the existence of Daredevil in the city. Uh, Joey Pants. I, I, I feel um, like Joey Pants in anything is kind of a red Yeah, if you don't know Joey Pants, guys, just Google it. Um, Bad Boys, uh, Midnight Run. He's done a lot of great. He's got a lot of character work. He plays either a cop or a reporter. Same type of character here. They throw him in a trench coat and a stupid hat, and they send him off to do these scenes. And he shows up here. Uh, he's getting information. And Kevin Smith, uh, I guess a corner. So anyway, Kevin Smith found the stupid nunchuck, or baton, I should say. That Mr. Um, Daredevil left behind. So that's that's the scene. That's his cameo, in case you're wondering, folks. He but yeah, like what, a, are we really calling it a baton? Uh, well, I, that, what is it called? No, that's, that's what it is, right? It's I baton. think it had a vibrating function. That shit looked like it was from Ikea. Uh, <laughs> maybe like the secret menu at Ikea. <laughs> 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 or the back no, room of Bed no, Bath & Beyond. the back room. It's yeah, the back, the back room. room of Ikea, yeah. Uh, he made oh, me... in the back room of Ikea is where yes. Daredevil has his shitty hideout. Oh. <laughs> oh, my man. God. I would pay to watch that show. All right. We got, we got a lot, lot of references, folks. You got to Google a lot. You're going to be Googling the shit out of this show. Uh, he made me dot, 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 miss. Uh, no, Colin Farrell. You've been missing for years. Farrell's acting is no better than uh, in this than his uh, sex tape that got leaked out years ago. <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess i'm alone i guess i'm the only one who saw that come on guys oh jeez. I, I, I don't make a habit of watching those but i mean uh, if it's well thing, it, <laughs> no judgment it's a no judgment restroom right. uh i think you girls in trouble uh cue to the second crappy evanescent song around the hour and 11 minute mark as gardner performs uh, an interpretive dance using two sides mood lighting and a shitload of hanging sandbags um <laughs> As to bring me to life scene, folks. In case you're wondering, Evidence is his biggest hit. You're going to have to endure it here. And this is why the album and the song became a hit was because it was featured in this shitty superhero film. Am I correct on No, this? it was No. Uh, I believe no. so. You think it was a hit before the movie came out? Yes. I, I don't know if I agree with that, but all right. Trust me, I have memories I'm trying to forget. Remember me? Garner shows up ready for action around the hour and 14 minute mark. Decked out like she just finished her bartending shift at a strip club. Uh, I guess I used all the red leather for Daredevil's costume and didn't have any leftover for Elektra. Last time I checked, her costume was red. Am I correct on this? Yep. Thank you. Jay, She's what the gotta fuck? She's got to have some variations. There's, I mean. It's black, Jay. The whole outfit is black. She has no variation. It's just straight black leather. Come on, man. You didn't even try to put any red in there. She, her character is, is wears a red outfit, including a bandana and shit. I mean, we would say it would be ridiculous to run around in red underwear like that, but they already did that with the protagonist. And, so. Well, and plus in, the, in her spinoff, wasn't she in red basically the entire time? Yes, she was. That's yes, a good point. Right. She was. That's what I said. They did have the costume later on. There was no excuse. It was uh, and, Resurrection Red. And in the uh, series, the Daredevil thing, she's wearing red in that too. So there you go. So again, black leather guy. So you might be a little confused, but hang on. I am ashamed that I know this much about it. Yeah, I know. You know a lot there, dear. Um <laughs> Hey, Orphan, let's play. Farrell is about the only one that seems to be having any fun in this turd, probably due to copious amounts of whiskey during filming, and I guess drugs, right, uh, Griff? Yeah, this was when he was like, and he says in later interviews, he was basically like taking everything up offered to him. And so anyway, uh, Daredevil and Elektra have a big fight scene uh, with the, while laundry is hanging, and she ends up wounding him pretty bad in the shoulder. So he's out of commission, and while that's happening, uh, this asshole bullseye shows up, and then these no, two no, start no, fighting. no, not Affleck. I was talking about um, Farrell. No, I know, I know, but I'm talking about Affleck. I'm just explaining the scene here. And, and okay. as, as a result, now Farrell and now and Bullseye have to start fighting, and that's when he okay. says, "Hey, orphan, let's play." From the next trick, dot dot dot. We're gonna kill off Gardner's character only to have her show up in a contractually obligated standalone electro film just a few short years later. Uh, that's my next question, guys. Does anyone ever really die in a Marvel film? 
so far, Quicksilver. Oh, he's yeah. going to be back. He'll be back. In Infinity War, they're going to bring him no, back. No, you know why? He won't because Evan Peters was a superior Quicksilver. I agree with that. But if Disney buys 20th Century Fox, then they get, they get Evan Peters. So there you go, folks. So anyway, Elektra seemingly dies, and I put that in air quotes, and uh, Bullseye escapes for the moment. I tried, Father. I tried. I tried not to have this whole film take place in a flashback, yet here we are again at the same fucking church at the beginning of this turn. Okay, yeah, I so, completely uh, forgot about how long yep. he had been in that rectory. Uh, <laughs> getting shit. <yeah. laughs> rectory? Hella killed him. Hey, oh. All right, there you go. Uh, you, let's play. Oh. Or CGI play all over this massive organ around the hour and 20 minute mark. And by massive organ, I actually mean organ. <laughs> there you go, folks. Uh, so anyway, so they, basically, they Bullseye tracks him down to the same church that we saw at the beginning of the film. And these two got a uh, battle out, CGI battle out on the biggest organ I've ever seen. But um bum hey Superhero tip, guys. If you somersault backwards, you can easily avoid flying stained glass shards. <laughs> no real I joke actually, there. Is no, it? I that's your that's your tip for I have seen that in a have different you? movie. Oh god, guys, you can't. First of all, you, so anyway, uh, Bullseye uh, we mentioned earlier makes use of not just uh, his uh, throwing stars, but anything basically he can launch uh, paper clips and in this case stained glass shards. Uh, he's right there. How can he not hit him? All right, let's bring on the pain. Let's bring on the noise. Whew. Let's also bring on the cocaine. Oh my God. Let's also bring on the cocaine and hookers, since Farrell seems to be in his own movie at this point. He completely checks no, out. I of anything has happened. Like bring, in the, bring in the noise. Bring, bring in the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have preferred the movie he was in. Yeah, you're right. I think we'd rather see that film. Uh, again, he was the only one that decided to say "fuck it." I'm just going to start having fun, drunk or high or whatever he was on, painkillers, whatever the hell, and he did. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, though. No. Uh, Fisk is the kingpin. Uh, duh. How did Daredevil not figure this out already? Uh, Michael Dark, oh shit, Michael Clark Duncan practically had villain stamped on his forehead. How did he not know? Maybe he was wearing glasses in the director's cut. He was the biggest guy in the film, Jay. He was wearing glasses. <laughs> he was wearing I glasses. No, no, you have no idea no, who I am. He was, no, he was basically <laughs> wearing a, like a sticker that said, hello, my name is <laughs> Yeah, Stephen. I know. It's, it's obvious he's the villain. He, when he met him at the party, he should have known this is the guy running the city. He runs all the crime in the city. Uh, in case uh, for all you, it was you know, as hard Marvel to figure it out uh, as it was in a Batman '66 episode. Oh, what? Yeah, let's uh, let's. Hey, all yeah. respect to the '60s Batman. I'm just saying right. they had guys with shirts that said henchmen on it. Yeah, they did. No, you're absolutely. Oh, you're right. You're right. I was raised in the Bronx, Wesley. Uh, this is something you wouldn't understand. Was anyone else hoping that Daredevil and Kingpin would have a dance off, or is that just my inner West Side Story crying to get out? Oh, I would have loved it. This right. was like, I... like, like <laughs> yeah. So he see he kills Bull. Should say he kills Bullseye. We, I guess we forgot to mention that he manages to uh, get Bullseye and throw him out a stained glass window, and he falls to the ground onto the police car at the exact same moment. Uh, not police car. I'm sorry, regular car. The Joey Pants is driving past. First of all, how did Joe? How was able Joey Pants able to drive past the church when they have it cordoned off? Because all the cops show up, yet he's able to drive right through there. No, and he looks directly yeah. down at the car <laughs> and says, Bullseye. Oh, yeah, that was Ben Affleck. That was his tagline on the end of that. was Bullseye. Like, guys, how did he write? Like, how did Ben Affleck know that Joey Pants was in that car? You're absolutely right. Okay, so there's a lot uh, of questions. He was out I'm trying guy. to do, he was out, he was trying to outdo the last dad joke. This movie has made me dumb. I, I, I've <laughs> lost, I keep <laughs> anyway. All right, we're sliding. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost no, there. It's, it's the Billy <laughs> Madison effect. I know, right? <laughs> the Adam Sandler effect. Yeah, oh, don't. But seriously, but seriously, like he knocked him out of the window and then he looked down like directly yeah. where he was. And he knew and exactly like, who was in that car. Like somebody off camera is going, Ben, you're supposed to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. How would he know? Yeah, all right. So there's a lot of logical questions. So anyway. Was like, no, you know what it reminded me of? It was like when God bless his heart, <laughs> When George W. Bush waved at Stevie Wonder during the Kennedy Center honors. Ouch. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, you know, that's awesome. So basically, after he kills Bullseye, he goes to Kingpin's office, high rise office, and we got up this final showdown. Tell me the guys at Rikers. Um, and so they start fighting, and there's a big fight scene. And again, it's a lot of wire work. We've mentioned this before. Uh, at one point, he says, Tell the guys at Rikers how you got beat by a blind man. So basically, he bandages the best. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan by sliding underneath him on water. I'm not even going to get into that. There's the, it has to do with sprinklers and shit. He ends up breaking both his knees. And he says, tell the guys at Rikers how he got beat by a blind man. Uh, and that's why I said, who knew this film was a prequel to The Green Mile? Oh. Yeah, not hey, bad. How huh? many people has Daredevil killed at this yeah, point? Uh, uh, um, uh, well, two. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. the guy on the trains right. and Bullseye. Right, that's it, too. So they're trying to make him out to be like this stone-cold anti-hero killer. Right. But, I mean, he just kills two people. <laughs> and he doesn't kill the most important person. That's when he said justice is served. Uh, not if they keep making crap. I mean, he, he apparently like is, uh, you know, he can't get hit by a million bullets, <laughs> but he just kind of hops out of the way. Uh, <laughs> and then he and then he manages to kill two people, but he has to say right. something really corny beforehand. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he says, uh, and here he does not kill uh, the kingpin, which he should have. Uh, but and he just says he takes out both his knees and basically saying he's going to go to jail. And they're going back and forth. He says, well, when I got out of jail, I'm going to kill you. And, and Ben Affleck's, yeah, I'm going to be waiting. Like, guys, if you just kill them, we didn't have to deal with that at all. You can just eliminate <laughs> this problem right now. That he was says, the conversation he uh, had later with the Punisher at the bar. <laughs> uh, Jay, so he says justice is served. And I, eh, there you go. My joke wasn't even that funny to follow it up. Uh, now <laughs> I have faith that anything is possible, like making a decent adaption of Daredevil, for instance, the hour and 34 minute uh, mark. So basically he goes to, uh, everything's all sunny. Uh, you know, him and uh, Favreau are friends again. Not that they really weren't. He goes up to the rooftop where Electra and him had the big fight, and she left his uh, braille, her braille necklace hanging on a, a yeah. t- TV antenna. Uh, then he manages to find, which doesn't make any sense at all. Letting and, and the audience he feels know. It and goes, oh, yeah, yeah, and then she survived. But the guy, she was stabbed directly through the chest. She would have bled out. There's no way she would have lived. She doesn't have superpowers. Again, she's a good assassin. She's not super. She's not super uh, power uh, uh, inclined. Go get him, Matt. Affleck once again takes to the streets in a crappy red leather outfit and shit-eating grin, only to end up in a black leather outfit, sans the shit-eating grin, 13 years later. <laughs> Griffin on credits? Is there anything? Uh, no. What? Ah! That was the scene, though. Uh, the go get him, Matty, was the part where it's like, they really want to sell a sequel with that. Oh, yeah, they did. Like, he's him. trying to jump yep. into it. It just didn't happen. No, Matt, Matty did not go get him. No. <laughs> Oh my God, this was absolutely terrible, folks. All right, folks. So that is uh, that is Daredevil for this week with your tie-in for Justice League. Uh, listen to us and then go see Justice League and good luck with that. We took it on play with a lot longer show. Can we flush it, ladies and gentlemen? Can we please, please flush it? Flush it down the confessional. <laughs> There you go, folks. Consider it. Consider it plus. That is it for this week. I want to thank my lovely co-cinematic flusher, Midwest movie mogul, Colleen Griffin, and our special guest, uh, author, historian, and podcaster, Jay Sandlin. Jay, thank you so much for your insights and your comedy yes. styling. I can't wait stories. to get you guys on Who Would Win Soon. We are so excited, are yes. We'll folks, yeah. yeah. I, I just started subscribing. So yes, yeah. folks, yeah. If you haven't listened to that, it's hashtag Who Would Win. Go check out that podcast. He does a really great job over there. And one, of, one or both of us are going to be over there moderating, and we'll be honored to do so. And uh, hopefully Jay will be back for a future episode. Uh, so thank you so much, Jay. We do appreciate that. We're going to be back next week to flush yet another cinematic turn. Until then, say goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Jay, you're supposed to say goodbye. This is the oh, reason. goodbye. Jesus Christ, every every week. Hi, this is Sarah Poulton, and I want to thank you for listening to this week and every week as we flush these turds down our cinematic bowl here in the restroom. And by turds, I mean the movies, not my ex-boyfriends. If you haven't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play Music so we can attract more listeners and so you don't miss a single episode. We love feedback, so email us at signalsoffury at gmail.com with your comments and suggestions for future flushes. Also, be sure to check out our home restroom on the net, signalsoffury.com. Until next time, remember, we're here to flush it, so you don't have to see it. I'm Sarah Poulton, and this has been the award-winning Soiled Restroom Cinema. <laughs>